Chicago leads the all-time series 12 to 9. We'll see how it plays out today. Dan Vassell approaches the football, kicks it, a low line drive kick. It'll bounce to Dee Brizolaro at the 16-yard line. It banks off his face mask. He picks it up after it hits the turf, and then he is wiped out by Wade Self as he crosses the 20-yard line and gets out close to the 22, and that's where Chicago will take over here in the first series of the football game. No score here at Case, and it's great to have you with us for our broadcast coverage of Case Western Reserve football. The Spartans with a five-game winning streak on the line. Not as long of a winning streak intact now as when these teams met a year ago when Chicago defeated Case 24-21. to The quarterback comes out. It's Kevin Shelton getting the start, and he will hand it straight back to our buddy Frankie Adarqua, and he is hit and knocked down for little or no gain. In fact, he might have lost a yard, Ed. Back to the 21-yard line, Francis Adarqua. Adarqua, the senior out of Wheaton, Illinois. Does it seem like Adarqua's been on this team for about six years now, Dave? <laughs> Exactly uh, right, Ed. He's been a well. He's been a four. He's a four-year starter now for the Maroons, and uh, he had a lot of playing time as a freshman all the way up through. Very similar to our buddy over at Rochester, uh, Clarence Onyoruku. We've been calling his name for eight years. They give it back to Adarqua, and again he is hit and knocked down. Case coming out with some fire defensively as Michael Harris got in there and made the first hit on Adarqua. The running game for Chicago this year has not been as good as it has been in years past. In fact, Adarqua has only run for, uh, well, it's just under about 450 yards for the season. He's not been as prolific with the uh, long runs and the big gainers this year. The Chicago offense is running for about 125 yards a game, but that's still lower than what Dick Maloney would prefer uh, his team produce on the ground. They give up a lot of yardage at over 300 yards total offense a game by their opponent so far this year. Shelton throwing it intended for Brizolara. He is hit by Jake Adams and that jars the ball loose. And that'll bring about fourth down for Chicago. It will be a three and out for the Maroons on their first possession of the day. Three plays they netted just two yards. That case defense has been stout against the run all year. They give up just over 90 yards per game. That puts them in the tops or the top 10% in Division Three. The punter for Chicago is Jeff Sauer. He takes the snap and gets it away. Dan Calabrese has it bounced twice in front of him, and he cannot uh, get it. And Chicago will down it back behind the 40 near the 39 yard line and that's where the Spartans will take over in their own territory here in the first quarter we have no score 13 17 to go here in the first quarter case is going to show a two tight end set to start with both Bryce Coleman and Rob Lajeunesse are going to start for the Spartans Eric Olson is the quarterback the junior out of Bethel Park PA Lajeunesse in motion. One of 17 seniors being honored today. They'll give it to Kenny Reardon. Great spin move across the 40 to the 45 to the 50. Down to the 40 to the 30 on the sideline. Pushed out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Wow, did Tony Opperman make a great block. He turned his defender all the way around, and that created the cutback lane for Reardon, who just came right back across the formation. Opperman starting for the first time since early in the season. I think he was hurt in the Rochester game and hasn't seen action since early September. We didn't know if he was going to start and if he was, how long he was going to play, but a great block to open the game for Tony Opperman. So Kenny Reardon springs free. He stepped out of bounds at the 16-yard line. First and 10 Spartans deep in Chicago territory. No score. Coleman in motion this time. Reardon gets the handoff. He is grabbed from behind and thrown down by Matt Sargent, the defensive end, who made a great play breaking through and wrapping up Kenny Reardon. That time the push wasn't there offensively. Chicago got a penetration on the defensive front, and Reardon didn't have anywhere to go to start with. Manny Secre checks in in the backfield. So does Steve Magistar back at fullback, but he'll stand to the left. 
See Gray to the right of Eric Olson in the shotgun. The junior takes the snap, looks to throw it over the middle. It is caught by Magister at the 20 yard line. Case loses a couple on the screen pass. And it will be third down for the Spartans now. Third and 12, the football marked back. Well, they're going to say got back to the line of scrimmage. I thought first they marked it at the 20 yard line, Ed, but they put the football back down at the 18. That was one of those inside screens. I think Chicago recognized screen right away, and they were pursuing or hoping, the case was hoping Chicago would pursue to the outside. Instead, it was a center screen to the fullback, and Chicago was right there waiting. Eric Olson with Lapsevic in motion to the near side. Olson back to throw on third down and 12. He'll run for it now as everybody's covered. He dives to the 15 and picks up only three yards. It'll be fourth down and close to nine for Case. They will send out the field goal unit and Dan Vassell, who won the game last week in overtime against Worcester, will come out and attempt a 33-yard field goal. Vassell looked very good in warm-ups today, too. Very confident, very straight on with his kicks. The snap back to Calabrese, the holder. Here is the kick by Vassell, the senior. It is up and it is good. And the Spartans take a three to nothing lead on a 33 yard field goal by Dan Vassell. 10.45 to play here in the first quarter. Spartans three, Maroons nothing. Chicago ball when we come back after this brief timeout. It's Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty and our producer Mike Becker from Chili Case Field. 42 degrees at game time, but bright and sunny. It is a great day for football here in Cleveland. We are on the campus of Case Western Reserve University for Spartans football. The Chicago Maroons contesting this game against Case today in the final home game of the regular season. Dan Vassell with a short kick. Case will try and get to it, but it's caught by an up back at the 40 yard line. I think Vasso got a little more into that than he wanted to. Case was trying to run that play where they're able to recover the kickoff. We've seen him do that over the years Ed, a couple of times very successfully. Well, they did it last year at Chicago, got the ball back and took the lead. And there it looked like Chicago was ready as, as the linebacker, Skyler Montefalco, called for the fair catch. As soon as it was in the air and he saw he was gonna get there, he put up the fair catch signal and just drifted under it to make the catch, was satisfied with where he was gonna be on the field. Not very often you see a fair catch on a kickoff, but uh, that's exactly what he did. The football is at the 39 yard line. Shelton goes back, hands the football to Mike West, the fullback. You saw Darkwa carry it exclusively in the first series. And this time they go to the fullback. Mike West, he's a junior out of Willowbrook, Illinois. And ends up getting back, might have lost a yard there. Second down and 11, they mark it at the 38-yard line of the Maroons. Well, Ian Gaines also gets some carries, as does Zach Ross Nash for Chicago. They've, they've split the duties this year as opposed to having a featured back. 10.06 to play, first quarter, 3-0 Case. Shotgun snap back to Shelton. He looks to get rid of it, throws it left side, and it is incomplete. Five wide receivers set there for Chicago. They shifted into it and forced Case and their linebacking crew to take over covering one of the upbacks or one of the slot receivers. That was Andrew Mandato, the intended target. Mandato not even listed as a receiver on their two-deep chart. He is listed as a backup quarterback on their roster. But he was out there as a uh, receiver that time. He'll line up in a slot position again. D. Brizolara splits out wide to the right. Former Aurora Greenman star. Here is the snap back to Shelton on third down and 11, and he shoots it too high over the middle, looking for Brizolara, 
and it's fourth and 11 for the Maroons. They will have to punt it away again, and despite starting out in great field position, Chicago unable to move the football in case with a three to nothing lead, they will get the football back. Six plays for Chicago so far offensively and they have netted one yard offensively. Jeff Sauer averages almost 42 yards a kick. The football is marked at the 38 yard line. Calabri sets up at his own 25. Here is the kick and it is a good one. Great hang time, spiraling kick. Calabri calls for and makes the fair catch back near the 22-yard line. That will be a 40-yard kick with no return. Case will come out with 9.49 to play here in the first quarter and a three to nothing lead. And we really haven't talked about it much yet. De Brizolara, 10 touchdown receptions, 13 total touchdowns, including two punt returns for touchdowns for Chicago. He is a guy that Case will have to keep track of today. But Case has the ball right now. Eric Olson under center will go back and hand to Secret, but flags come out. Delay a game, maybe? I think they... I think they'll get a false start here. Or illegal procedure. It'll go against Case. It'll be a five-yard penalty. And they will mark it back to the 17. First down and 15 for Case. Ball marked at the Spartan 17-yard line. What a beautiful day we have here in Cleveland. It feels a lot better out there in the sun for the players. There's some of the fans in the shade. A little uh, cold today. 42 degrees at game time. Eric Olson takes the snap. They'll go back and hand it to Secre. He is hit and knocked down as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Nice push there by Skyler Montefalco to come in and record the tackle for Chicago. Three straight wins at for Chicago, Ohio Wesleyan and Denison on the road, and then they walloped Kenyon last week 41 to 17 in the Windy City. They're beginning to turn it around. They got off to a slow start. They suffered a loss at home to Wabash earlier in the season. Snap back to Olson, second down and 15. He rolls to his right, throws it near the sideline, looking for metal sits, the senior, and it is out of bounds, incomplete. And Case will be looking at a long third down now. Third down and 15 from the 17-yard line. Now Chicago has blitzed on the first two plays of this possession. And Case has been forced to pick it up. And with that, Olsen didn't have any time on the last play because of the blitz. Olsen in the shotgun. Four receiver set. He's in trouble. He gets rid of it as he is hit as he throws it. Falls incomplete. Metal sits uh, maybe in the same zip code as where that ball landed, but well, he was, he was out, trying to get rid of it out hey, of the pocket. Out of the pocket, and he threw it back across the field. Ordinarily, you'll see it to the area that they're running, but Olsen did throw it back across the field, got it past the line of scrimmage, and he was outside the pocket, so he met the requirements to allow him to ground the football. Olsen will stand at the his own goal line to punt this one away. The football is marked at the 17-yard line and Brizolera stationed at midfield to return it for Chicago. This one will bounce to Brizolera and actually it goes over his head and rolls back Case's way to the 34-yard line. Great kick by Olsen as he gets the bounce over Brizolera. I don't think deep envisioned the way that ball was going to bounce, but it uh, bounced away from him and high over his head and 40, rolls all the way back to the 34. 48 yard kick officially by Olsen with the roll. That's how they, uh, they measure my drives when I golf too, Dave. Yeah, you gotta get that bounce <laughs> and the uh, yardage after the initial strike. 8.47 to play, three to nothing case. And here come the Maroons now moving right to left. Here in the first quarter, and Shelton in trouble. He tucks it under and tries to run for it. He gets a yard there out to the 35-yard line. Dale English records the tackle with some help from Michael Harris. They'll give him the length of the football on the play, but again, that's now seven plays for Chicago offensively. And they're still under two yards in total offense. Case one last week 
in overtime at the College of Worcester, 24 to 21. Trying to extend their winning streak to six here today in the UAA opener, and they'll hand this one to Zach Ross Nash, the backup fullback, and he tries to plow ahead, but he is knocked down. Again, English in there on the stop, and it's third down and 10 for the Maroons. Well, Chicago's going to keep trying to run it against a defense that doesn't give up much on the ground. If they do, uh, <laughs> Gates' coaching staff will have to be very pleased with the idea of, sure, go ahead, run right at our front four. Case's defense holding teams to an average of 91 rushing yards per game. Back to throw Shelton. They come after him. English hits him as he throws. He got rid of it. It's an incomplete pass. Dale English right on Kevin Shelton and broke up that play. And it's fourth down and 10 for Chicago. And Dale English here on senior day has come out fired up in this game. Well, I think he's looking for those two sacks that'll get him into a tie for the all-time lead at Case Western. 28 and a half currently. Needs two to tie Brian Calderon. Back to punt it, Jeff Sauer. He will kick this one away. This guy has quite a leg. And this one will be caught by Calabrese at the 18 to the 20, out to the 25, hit and driven down to the turf at about the 29 yard line. Nice punt coverage for the Maroons by Tom Ferdendorfer who recorded the tackle. They will give Calabrese, I believe the 32 yard line on that play. <laughs> so a wow. 14 yard return. I don't think he got past the 30. <laughs> Wow. That favorable spot there for Case as Calabrese records the return. Decent field position for the Spartans. They lead it three to nothing with 7.18 to play here in quarter number one. Eric Olson with Lapsevic in motion. They will hand it to Lapsevic and now he changes direction. Olson with a great block. Springs Lapsevic out to the 35 to the 37 yard line and out of bounds. Oh, Olsen recognized that there was a cutback from Lepsevic and then had to eye up a defender and put a nice little shoulder block into Sevy Francis Shelley. Well, it turns safety. in to a five-yard gain, Ed, on a play that looked like it was going nowhere. Great job by Olsen. Eye in the backfield now, Magister and Secret. Olsen takes the snap, they'll hand it to Manny. The freshman out of Miami spins past the 40 yard line and gets close to the 43 before he is finally hit and tackled. Nope. Danny Polineski records the stop and a great run by Secre. And no real direct hits on Secre. He managed to absorb some of them. Glancing blows as he twisted and turned his body through the hole. And for Secre, enough to move the chains. Pick up of seven, first down for Case. First and 10 from the 43 yard line. Spartans moving left to right in their home blue uniforms, leading it three to nothing. Secre again on the carry, bounces around a block and dives ahead close to the 49 yard line. A hard earned six yards for Manny Secre as he's finally tackled by Sevy Francis Shelley. Good first down run, it'll be second down. We'll call it four. For the Spartans. Secre has such a downhill style, Dave. He gets his shoulder pads over his knees. You don't really get a, a good hit against him. There's not a lot to hit. And he just deflects a lot of those blows that come from the defenders. You need to click his ankles together and bring him down. Yeah, great freshman season in progress for Manny Secre. Came in averaging four yards a carry. He has four rushing touchdowns. He'll take it and run it right side here. Dives into... Maroon's territory as he gets down close to the 47 yard line. That'll be a pickup of four and should be enough for the first down. Now they're gonna, they're gonna say he's short. Well, if he is short, it is by just inches. And they weren't even gonna measure it. The referee immediately, oh no, now we signaled first down. Now the linesman on the near side of the field started to say, uh, to move the chains and now they will stop play and the officials will talk it over. Well now they've moved the chains. Have you ever seen them move chains back once they've actually moved them? I, I don't think I've ever seen them have them move the chains back. 
Now more and more of the officials are coming in to chime in on the situation. I think Chicago. they want to get the, the time clock correct because when the chains are moved, it should be a stop clock, and the clock was running. Yeah, they will put some time back on here. It's first and 10 case. Three to nothing Spartans on a 33-yard field goal by Dan Vassell. Early lead for the Spartans. They led late in the game against Chicago last year before D. Brizolara scored two late touchdowns. And the Maroons shocked the Spartans, who at the time were unbeaten, and riding a 38-game winning streak. Still trying to get uh, some time back on the clock set uh, properly. I believe Chicago has made like 40 substitutions getting the right personnel in there during this uh, break in the action. Yeah, for a very easy first and 10 call. <laughs> Chicago looking for the correct personnel. 5.43 is the time on the clock, so they have that squared away. And the Spartans will head back to the line of scrimmage. Eric Olson with two receivers out on the left. Lajeunesse at tight end. He'll go in motion. They'll go back and hand to Secret. Running behind a blocker. Makes it back to the line of scrimmage, and then he is hit and knocked down. Nice defensive coverage by Alex Zerbicki, the middle linebacker. Zerbicki is a force out there, a junior out of Clinton Township, Michigan. Just outside of Detroit. No gain on the play, second down and 10. Great to have you with us for Case Football today as the Spartans play the conference opener against the rival Chicago Maroons. Eric Olson fakes a handoff, rolls out right. Now he tucks it under. He'll try and run it. There's a penalty flag in. Olson is caught from behind by Zerbicki, who makes his second consecutive tackle. Well, here's a decision now for Dick Maloney. If this is a holding call, do you give Case another shot at second and 20 or 22, or do you take the third and 12 because of the sack? It is a hold against Case. So we'll see what the Chicago veteran coach decides, and I believe he's going to decline it. They were looking over at Dick, and I believe he made the signal to wave it off. Oh, he is going to take the nope. penalty. Yep, now they say we'll take it. It's an interesting call, what you want to do in that situation. You make it second and 22 and give Case two downs to come up with a first down, or do you play it at third and 12 and see if you can hold them one time? He'll take the yardage in this case, second down and 20 from the Case 43-yard line. Spartans leading it by three. Three zip at this juncture in the first quarter. Draw play. It goes to Secret. He has good running room. Back to the 50. Spins down close to the 46-yard line. So he gets the penalty yardage back. And Case will be looking at a third and nine. So a great run by Secret to get the Case back into a little more legitimate third down situation. Yeah, it's manageable now as opposed to being third and 15 or third and 20. And you have to wonder after this play if Dick Maloney's going to second guess himself in hindsight. Third down and nine from the Chicago 46. Shotgun snap back to Olsen. He fires it over the middle. That is picked off. Intercepted by Skyler Montefalco. He is going to take this one back all the way for a touchdown. The right sideline. He goes in for the score. He'll get an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. But if it occurred before the touchdown, it comes off the board this year in college football. Well, he was holding the ball out if, in somewhat of a taunting fashion as he was getting close to the end zone, Ed, and I don't believe he was in at the time of the flag. And that will take the score off the board. It will back them up 15 and will put them at the 20-yard line if the flag stays at the 10. New rule this year in college football that if the unsportsmanlike occurs during the play, there is no touchdown. Skyler Montefalco's first interception of the season and in his zest in returning the football, he has made a big mistake and they take the points off the board and Chicago will have the ball first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Any any movement or 
gesture that the referees deem is headed towards the other team is going to draw an unsportsmanlike conduct flag. And we've seen it at all levels. I saw it in a Division I game uh, following a fake punt. I believe it was LSU had the points taken off the board. A Division II game locally here that was televised had the same situation where a, a defensive player was taunting following a touchdown. And again, the score came off the board. And now here, Chicago loses points. And for an offense that's struggling, that could come back to bite them. First and 10 from the 20. They'll knock the football loose on the handoff. Chicago comes in and recovers. But Dale English was right there to bust up the handoff between Shelton. And we'll see who was in there, Ed. I believe that was a Adarqua who was trying to get the ball. And English was right in there between them. Yeah, he was coming on a jet sweep. And English jumped in through the the hole created by the pulling guard and was there as soon as the handoff was made to a dark walk. Ball came loose. Mike Van Roten, the offensive lineman, the left guard, came back and fell on the football. So they end up losing 10 on the play, second down and 20, and they will hand this one to Zach Ross Nash trying to run left. He is wiped out by Ryan Ferguson back at the 30-yard line. Only Chicago going the wrong way now. They have lost 10 yards on this drive on what started out as a potential touchdown return off an interception. The unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, then the loss on the fumble, and now a no-gain play on the carry by Zach Ross Nash, and they're looking at third and 20 from the case 30. Shelton. Drops back to throw, looking downfield, throwing for a Darkwa, and it's incomplete. Adam Watson and Kevin Nossum there defensively. The ball was underthrown, and it is fourth and 20 from the 30-yard line. This would be a 47-yard field goal attempt if they elect to try and kick it, but right now they have the offensive unit still on the field. Well, Jeff Sauer has the leg if he can get into it. Sowers long on the season is a 39. But uh, boy, we've seen him today on some of his punts. He has a very strong leg, but they will go for it here. They're out of time. They're gonna, oh, they did get it off. He got it off with one second on the play clock. Shelton fires middle of the field for Brizolara. He makes the catch inside the 10. It's a first down. D. Brizolara strikes again. How does that happen? On, on third and 20. He goes down the seam, stops, cuts across the middle on a skinny post, and Case is too busy defending the goal line and not the first down marker, and Chicago gets new life. So it's inside the 10. Brizolara comes down with it at the eight yard line. 22 yard pickup, good for the first down. And Chicago with new life here, first and goal from the eight. Shelton takes the snap. Pump fakes, fires corner of the end zone, looking for Brizolara, and it's incomplete, overthrown and out of the back of the end zone. Case defensively there, Kerry Dieter providing the defensive pressure, and Jordan Banky helping out as well on the double coverage of D. Brizolara. Kevin Nossum and Jake Adams are playing linebacker for Case Western. Looking down here at the bench, Dave, Wade Self is just He's sitting on the bench in a situation where it almost looks like he's resting or he just got some medical treatment. Second and goal from the eight. Case shifting around defensively. They come after Shelton, steps up in the pocket, fires in the end zone, tipped, and it is incomplete as it hits the turf at the back of the end zone. Keegan Cisneros was the intended receiver. It went off of his hands and it stayed in the air. It just looked like it floated. Yeah, Dieter was in the area but could not catch it off the tip. Cisneros, the senior out of Topeka, Kansas, and now it's third and goal from the eight-yard line. Case leading it by a score of three to nothing here. We have 138 to play in the first quarter in the UAA opener for both teams, Case and Chicago today. K six and one, Chicago five and two. Shelton from the shotgun, 
Fires it near side, uh, far side rather, caught near the sideline, inside the five, not into the end zone. Andrew Mandato makes the grab, and he is hauled down near the three yard line, and it's fourth and goal for Chicago. And they have Jeff Sauer out to try and tie this one up. They will hold this one just inside the 10 yard line. So it will be a 20 yard field goal attempt for Jeff Sauer. His long on the season is 39. The holder is Cody Edgeworth. He gets it down and it's blocked by Manny Secray. Secray with his second blocked kick of the season. Jake Adams got in there as well. And the Spartans hold Chicago off the board. Blocked kick on the 20 yard field goal attempt. One of the case players was dragged down following the block. I'm surprised there wasn't a penalty called there that would have added on to the end of the play. But that went from top of the hill to really bad for Chicago to back <laughs> into a situation where they could have scored some points to nothing on the board. Case will take over first and 10 from the 15 yard line. Kenny Reardon gets the handoff from Eric Olson, and he is held down and wrapped up at the 15 for no gain. Had both Manny Secre and Jake Adams were in there almost simultaneously. I thought it was Secre. Did you see if it was Adams that got a handoff? I don't, I don't know who got it officially, but Secre came off the edge, and Adams came right up the middle. It looked to me like it was Secre, but. Uh, I've been wrong before. But uh, he had a block kick earlier this year and uh, may have gotten his second here today. Either way, it short circuits, a scoring opportunity for Chicago. Olsen over the middle for lap seven, makes the grab out at the 35 yard line. It's a 21 yard pickup for Sean Lap Sevic. Boy, and Arlen Hill really led with his helmet on that play, too, as Lap Sevic was being dragged down. Hill was coming over. Great catch by the freshman out of Presto, PA. Lapsevic coming into the ball game with 26 receptions, averaging just under 12 yards a catch, and that one goes for over 20, and that's the final play of the first quarter. Your score, the Spartans three, the Maroons nothing. Second quarter action is coming up in just a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering world cuisine created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook. We go to the second quarter here, case three, Chicago nothing. Case football, Eric Olson under center calls out the signals. They have it at the 38-yard line. Spartans operating in their own territory, and we have confirmed Jake Adams with the block of the field goal attempt. And that keeps this game three zip in Case's favor. Lajeunesse in motion. Olsen will go back, hand it up the middle. This is Secre carrying it. Gets across the 40 to the 45. And close to the 47-yard line. Pickup of nine for Manny Secre. And it's a second and one coming up for Case. First quarter stats, Case with 100 yards of total offense at Chicago, 20. Maybe more notable as they had minus eight yards rushing. That's some performance, 15 minutes by the Case defense. Just underway, second quarter, Case three, Chicago nothing. Metal sits, lines up wide left, and now Secret joins him as a receiver on the left side. They'll hand it to Magister, straight up the middle, has the first down, breaks across midfield and gets to the Chicago 46-yard line. First and 10 case, 14.09 to go in the second quarter. 
And the Spartans playing well early here in the UAA opener, despite an interception by Olsen that looked to be returned for a touchdown. The penalty brought that back out. Chicago went the wrong way on that drive, losing 10 yards before they finally hit Brizolara to get inside the 10 yard line, but they could not punch it in. They'll go to Metalsitz, left side, dives across the 45 and gets close to the 44 yard line, a two yard pickup. And a second and eight coming up for Case. They lead it by a score of three to nothing. Well, Jake Adams had the blocked extra point against Allegheny a year ago. He comes up with a blocked field goal here today. And right now a three to nothing case lead. Marching here inside Maroon's territory. They're at the 44 yard line, second down and eight. Shotgun snap back to Olsen, rolls right, has good protection. Throws it left side, metal sits wide open, makes the catch at the 26, gets down close to the 23 before he is wrapped up on an ankle tackle by Stephen Murphy, the cornerback. And that stopped Metalsitz from moving on down the left sideline into the end zone for a touchdown. That's a big gainer to the senior, Brian Metalsitz. Brandon Bullock, the defensive end for Chicago, was coming. He beat Brendan Rolle off the spot. Rolle was catching up, and then all of a sudden, Manny Secre noticed that he got and beat, gave a little chop block, and Olsen was able to step up in the pocket because of the block and find the receiver downfield. So great job by Manny Secre recognizing his responsibilities in the second or in the backfield. First and 10 from the 21 yard line. Case could not get the right personnel on the field. They spend a timeout. We'll take one as well. Three nothing Spartans, 12.44 to go in the second quarter. We'll have more in a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. This year, Qdoba will cater like 10,000 parties. Where? When? I'm there. Well, these parties are hypothetical. I was just talking about Qdoba catering. Hot taco bars with fire-grilled chicken and marinated steak, flour tortillas, and taco shells. You'll also get their hand-smashed guacamole, cheese, sour cream, lettuce, and salsa. They'll deliver to your home or office, and they'll even set it up. Can I bring a guest? Oh, boy. Visit Qdoba.com today for more information about Qdoba catering. Qdoba Mexican Grill. More to explore. Spartans three, Chicago nothing. David Wilson, Ed Doherty back at Case Field. The UAA opener today under bright sunny skies in Cleveland. 42 degrees at game time. Case with the football first and 10 at the 21 yard line. Olsen takes the snap. They'll go back and hand it to Reardon. Gets a nice block from Lajeunesse and he cuts down inside the 20 yard line. They'll mark him down at the 17. It's a pickup of four for Kenny Reardon, the sophomore runner out of Spring Grove, Illinois, and the Spartans are in the red zone. Nice long sustained drive here for the Spartans, approaching three minutes in the quarter. They had it for the final minute of the first quarter. Second down and six from the 17 yard line. Case three, Chicago nothing. They'll go and hand it to Secre. He cuts inside the 15. Another high jump down inside the 10 yard line before he is hit and knocked out of bounds. Danny Polineski records the stop on Secre, forcing him out of bounds inside the five yard line. This guy could run the high hurdles for Case. Well, they always talk about defensively. You can't hit what you can't see, so you have to keep your head up to make that tackle. And as soon as Secre recognized that the defender went down low, he went up over the top and picked up an additional five yards. First and goal from the three-yard line. Secre in the backfield. They'll give it to him. He gets hit at the five and dragged down behind the five-yard line. Nice defensive play by Skyler Montefalco of the Maroons. Well, Montefalco is going to have to do a few things to make up for his mistake that cost Chicago six in the first quarter. It was his unsportsmanlike conduct penalty as he held the ball out as he was heading into the end zone untouched. Looking back, held the ball out as if to taunt the case pursuers, and he got the flag. Second and goal from the six. The Spartans lost three. Lajeunesse in motion. Olsen calls out the signal. They'll give it to Manny again. Cuts inside and is tripped up. And he got back inside the five-yard line. 
It will be a third and goal for Case from the four. Montefalco there again for the Maroons. And what do you think it means to these Case players to see Tony Opperman back in there on the offensive line today? Well, initially when he got hurt, they thought, well, he'll be out a couple of weeks. And then the more they looked at it and the more he tried to rehab, they recognized that it was more serious and the, the word that we had gotten was that his season was done. He refused to accept that. Olsen is going to be sacked as he drops back to throw. Is looking to the left side of the end zone. But he will go down in a heap as he is sacked by Michael Seaford, the defensive tackle. And Case looking at a long fourth down now. And Dan Vassell will come in and try his second field goal of the day. This will be a 29-yard attempt. English will snap it. Calabrese will hold it at the 19. It'll be from the near hash mark, left side of the field. The snap is good. The hold is good. Here is the kick by Vassell, and it is good. Vassell, two for two today, and he makes it six to nothing. Case with 9.54 to play in the first half. Six nothing Case. We'll take a timeout back after this on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental in Cleveland has earned its eighth consecutive Ford Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or personalized wedding? Choose excellence by choosing the Intercontinental in Cleveland. Intercontinental's planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience that is proudly world-class. For more details, call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4100 to request a tour of the spectacular accommodations. Spartans up 6-0 on the strength of two Dan Vassell field goals. And Chicago will get it back with 9.54 to play in the second quarter. David Wilson along with Ed Doherty from beautiful Case Field in Cleveland, Ohio. Dan Vassell, the squib kick. That will bounce near the 35-yard line. Grabbed there by the Maroons. Return out across the 40 near the 45-yard line. The upback who fielded that ball was Tom Burdenderfer, the sophomore tight end out of Cathedral High School in Indianapolis. And a great day and a great uh, month so far for Dan Vassell, Ed. Well, leaving the, the Denison game, you know, there was speculation. You looked at that and you said, there's, there's no way that the kicking game for Case is going to survive an entire season. There were such struggles in that game and even the week before against, against Rochester and then they come out and at Allegheny, it was a little iffy. And since then, a complete turnaround and, and Vassell saved the season last week and had a great Two kicks so far today. Chicago has changed quarterbacks. Vincent Cortina hits Keegan Cisneros. Over the middle and the completion out to the Case 42-yard line. So they break over midfield and pick up 13 on the play. That's Chicago's only Chicago's second first down of the game. They still have negative yardage running the football. And Case has had the ball for two times as long as Chicago has this afternoon. Cortina is a sophomore. They will hand this one to Zach Ross Nash, the fullback. And uh, he gets to the 40. It'll be a pickup of two, second down and eight. Cortina, a 6'1", 200-pound sophomore out of Belmont, Massachusetts. Splitting time this year with Kevin Shelton. It's been pretty even. It's been a... Almost 50-50 for Dick Maloney. In years past, he's had a, a quarterback. He's had taller quarterbacks as well, guys that were in the 6-2, 6-3 range. Cortina, short drop, throws it over the middle, caught by Brizolara inside the 35, tackled near the 34-yard line. Ryan Ferguson and Kerry Dieter there defensively for the Spartans. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Cortina at his thrown six touchdown passes, but nine INTs for the sophomore. And that's decision making as a sophomore. It's a, you know, as you begin to, to see the field, learn the field, the game is maybe a little quicker than it was in high school. And just either trying to force a football or making a bad decision. Ross Nash, the lone man in the backfield right now. 
They will go and hand it to Ross Nash. He hits the wall, bounces away from the first wave, and then he is hit and knocked down back at the 35-yard line. Dan Calabrese finally got him to the turf, but it uh, looked like a Teflon situation there as he bounced off the first hit and was still on his feet, but Calabrese got him. Well, some zone blocking up front by Chicago. The case line did a nice job pursuing. They pushed the whole pile to the right, to the defensive right, the offensive left. Cutback came around, and there was Calabrese staying home on the weak side and made a nice open field tackle. It is fourth and one. They give him the 33-yard line on the spot. Could have been back as far as the 35 but the spot favorable for Chicago, fourth and one. They'll give it to Ross Nash. He is hit, he did not get it. Case holds on fourth down. Dale English, Michael Harris, Kevin Nossum all in there, and they tackle the fullback, Zach Ross Nash, before he can get the first down yardage that he needed. Well, the way Chicago was beginning to throw the ball, they had a couple of good passes over the middle, a couple of completions, and then went back to a running game that so far in the first half has been non-existent. You take away the minus yard there, three consecutive runs on that drive. They still are in negative yardage. They have minus six yards rushing on the ball game. 11 carries for minus six. The, the case front six doing an outstanding job. And at some point, Chicago is going to become truly one dimensional offensively. 7.18 to go here in the second quarter. Here come the Spartans offensively. Eric Olson will give it to Kenny Reardon to the 40, out to the 45, to the 49-yard line, and a great run by Reardon for first down yardage. Brian Metalsitz is upset with himself. He was out in front of Reardon, and uh, he couldn't decide where he wanted to go, and Reardon was waiting for Metalsitz to make a block one way or the other, and eventually Reardon just ran up Metalsitz back and picked up a couple of more yards after the contact. Well, as it is, it's a 16-yard pickup for a first down. Case operating in their own territory at the 49-yard line. 6-0 Case, 6.49 to play here in the second quarter. Olsen to Reardon, straight up the middle. Great blocking, big hole out to the 40-yard line in Chicago territory. It's another first down for Kenny Reardon. He gets to the 39-yard line. That'll be a 12-yard pickup. So 28 yards on consecutive plays for Kenny Reardon. Another good push by Tony Opperman up front. 20 minutes before the game time, we didn't know if Opperman was going to play or not. And so far, Opperman, and then if he did start on senior day, how long he was going to go, if it was going to be one play, one series. Manny Secre in for Reardon now gets hit and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. Nice defensive coverage by Jake Longton, the senior out of Sioux City, Iowa for Chicago. He records the stop on Secre back at the 42-yard line. Loss of three, second down, 13 for Case, six nothing Spartans. Six minutes to go here in the second quarter at Case Field. It's the conference opener today. And the UAA really, Dave, is a single elimination tournament in the conference play with only three teams, or three other teams, three games. It's pretty much win and you keep going. Secre on a screen pass in trouble. He spins around but can only get back to the 45-yard line. Case loses three more. They might give him the 44, so it'll be a two-yard loss on the screen pass to Manny Secre from Olsen. Now Chicago was a little confused defensively on what they wanted to do there, but they did manage to read the screen, the backside screen. And Case is... Ideas of a big yardage gainer there really had no chance. Third down and 15 from the Maroon 44. Eric Olson with three receivers in the game. Metal sits as the lone man on the left. Case doesn't like the way things are looking here. They use a timeout. They will have one remaining. 5.03 to play here in the second quarter. We'll step aside for a timeout. Case leading it by a score of six to nothing. Back to Cleveland in a moment on the Spartans Broadcasting Network. I have this cool cash. What can I do with it? You can turn it into a hot meal at Rascal House. It's the best value in town. What do they have there? Buckets of wings, pasta, sandwiches, salads, and of course, great pizza. Are they open late? You bet. Open every night till 2.30 a.m. 
And you can even build your own pizza and order it online at rascalhousepizza.com. Cool. See you at the Spartans game? Yep. And see you after at Rascal House. 6-0 Spartans. Two field goals by Dan Vassell here on Senior Day. 6-0 lead with 5.03 to play in the second quarter. Case has the football, but now looking at a challenging third down and 15 from the Chicago 44-yard line. Eric Olson with Secre in the backfield. Three receivers set. Lajeunesse in at tight end. Back to throw. Olson looks downfield. Everybody's covered. He'll go down. Sack recorded by the Maroons. Jake Longton again leads the charge to get uh, Olsen in the backfield, and it's fourth down for Case, fourth and long, as this ball is uh, now spotted at the 46. Fourth and 17. Olsen sets up as if to go for it, and now he will drop back in punt formation. Quarterback is the punter for Case. Olsen awaits the snap. Here it comes. He will get the kick away. Brizolara back near his goal line will take it on a hop. Gets back to the five, and he is tackled out near the seven-yard line. Bad decision there by the Maroons. Actually, that was Emmett Carrier on the punt return. Brizolara is normally back there, but uh, this time it was Carrier. Probably could have let it bounce in for a touchback and get out to the 20 as it was. Case had uh, long time there on the punt to sprint some guys down there and they recorded the tackle at the eight yard line first and ten for Chicago well, Carrier certainly made a bad decision against a defense that has really dominated them offensively so far this game and the Maroons offense has been stuck in neutral most of this afternoon Zach Ross Nash is still the primary ball carrier. He lines up and gets the handoff from Cortina. He gets out close to the 15-yard line before he is hit and dropped. Dan Calabrese got in there. Jordan Banky was in there on the tackle. See Rich Doolin, Michael Harris also on the bottom of the pile. Nice pursuit to the football for the Spartans. It's just outside the 15-yard line. So a pickup of seven. Second down, we'll call it a long two for Chicago with 3.45 to play here in quarter number two. Well, statistically, K should be dominating this football game, but on the scoreboard, it still reads just 6 nothing. Two field goals by Dan Vassell has comprised the scoring so far. Cortina flips it out on a screen, caught near the 15, out to the 20-yard line, and Case will make the tackle at about the 22-yard line, caught by Mike West, the junior, Running back who was, uh, I think, the release valve option on that play, Ed. Well, he just kind of floated out to the flat, and as the survey downfield was longer and nothing there, the only option was really to just flip it out in the flat from Cortina. Well, it's good for a first down as they pick up six on the play the football is at the 22 yard line first and 10 for the maroons six nothing case they will flip it out to a dark one another screen pass to the flat adam watson makes the hit and the ball pops loose incomplete watson there defensively for case a dark one all of a sudden playing a receiver spot there and could not haul it in with Watson bearing down. Second down and 10. Adam Watson's playing with a large brace on his left arm. Goes from wrist to just up before his sleeve of his jersey. Had a uh, hyperextended elbow earlier this year, and that uh, keeps that from happening again. But uh, that is a long brace. Back to throw Cortina, he's in trouble and he will tuck it and try and run it. Gets across the 25 out near the 30, pays the price as Jake Adams comes in and puts a hit on the quarterback. Just short of the 30 yard line, picks up six on the play. Third okay. down and four. Cortina turned a six yard loss into a six yard gain. Things broke down quickly as the case defense was in the backfield in a blink of an eye. Cortina had no option but to tuck it and run. They ran for his life there and got six. Two receivers spread out to the right. A dark was in the backfield. Cortina back to throw it. Goes left side, almost intercepted 
by Jake Adams. He had it for a moment, couldn't hang on as he went out diving for it. Used every bit of his frame to reach up there and try and pick it off. It is incomplete, fourth down and four for Chicago now from the 29-yard line of the Maroons in case you'd get good field position out of this. Sauer back to kick it away. Calabrese back to receive it. Here they come, almost blocked, but he got it away. Calabrese at the 32-yard line to the 35 and tripped up ankle tackle before he gets to the 40-yard line. Well, I think Calabrese lost that in the sun for just a moment, Dave. You saw how he kind of fielded it off his hip as it was coming down. He almost caught it like you do on egg toss to the side without wanting to break it. Managed to pick up a couple of yards, but I think he was grateful just to be able to field the football cleanly. I think you have uh, been in the past the West Side Egg Toss champion. That's right. At several uh, family reunions. Yeah, we cheat a little bit. We use the hard-boiled eggs on our end. Brandon Bolock was the uh, Chicago player who recorded the tackle on Calabrese. Case has it first and 10 from the 39-yard line. 2.07 to play second quarter. Olsen draw play to Secre across the 40 out near the 44-yard line. Michael Allen is down. He's slow to get up. And hobbling as he gets up, and uh, he is right back over the football, ready to snap it back to Olsen. No huddle offense for Case. Five-yard pickup for Secre. Second and five. Olsen will try and run it now. Gets out for first down yardage as he dives to the midfield stripe. Eric Olson saw everybody covered and he ran for it and has the first down. Five yard pickup for Olson. They say he was down at the 49 yard line and I don't think that was a good spot for the Spartans. That's right at the first down marker. It looked like he extended the ball out to the 50 yard line. As it is, it's on the 49 and now Olson in trouble again in the pocket, he will go down. Again, it was Brandon Bolock, the freshman out of Naples, Florida, to record the sack on Eric Olson. Case uses its final timeout. Boy, Greg Double, I called the timeout and it had a few words with his receiving core, Sean Lepsevic and Brian Metalsitz. Now, two consecutive plays here. Olson had no one to throw to, and things were breaking down quickly. He absorbs the sack, but it only goes for a two-yard loss back to the 47. Second down and 12. Debs is still talking to Lepsevic and Metal sits about that last play. Seventeen seniors today playing their final regular season home game at Case Field. Three receivers set here on second down and 12. Olsen in the shotgun. Secret to his left. Olsen rolls left. Now stands in the pocket. Fires it for Metalsitz on the sideline, and it's out of bounds. Metalsitz tried to keep a toe in bounds while he made the grab, but it's incomplete. Third down and 12 for the Spartans with 124 to play. We're in the second quarter. Case will play each of their next two games to finish out the regular season on the road next week in St. Louis two weeks from today at Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh after that who knows Olsen in the shotgun hands it to Secre running breaks out to the right side gets close to the 45 yard line of the Maroons and then he is driven out of bounds they're going to say his forward progress was stopped inbounds they're going to keep the clock moving and also mark him down at the 47-yard line of the Maroons. Looked like he got uh, farther than that, Ed. But uh, Chicago with good pursuit there and driving Secre backward. And it's fourth down and six from the 47-yard line and under a minute to play. And you notice Brizolara has drifted onto the field in case Case Pooch punts it downfield again. Four on the play clock. And Case will take the penalty here. Delay of game penalty against Case. That stops the clock with 33 seconds left. And Case will quickly jog over to the sideline and talk with uh, Greg Debelak. 
Unless there was a timeout called here, Ed, but I only saw the official signal the penalty. They only marked the penalty. Yeah, they already marked the five-yard penalty. And the uh, referee seems a little put out here. He is uh, waving both teams back on the field. Both teams went to the sideline as if it was a timeout. Well, he was a little delayed in starting the play clock as well. So also now in punt formation. And Brizolara sets up at his own 20. Here is the kick from Eric Olson. And it angles near the sideline and goes out of bounds. They don't want uh, Brizolara to return it. And it goes out of bounds at the 33-yard line of the Maroons. So they will start out in their own territory. That's a 19-yard kick with no return. Well, Brizolara already has three special teams touchdowns this year. No reason to give them any momentum headed to the locker room. 6 nothing case here with 28 seconds left. And I think if Greg Doublex said anything, the Eric Olson on that one was trying to kick it all the way into the dorm rooms. I don't think it was a matter of just pinning them deep. It's get it as far out of bounds as you can. Well, Chicago has all three of their timeouts left if they want to use them during this 28-second span at the end of the second quarter. It is still Cortina, the sophomore quarterback, rolls out. He'll gun it deep downfield. This one is up for grabs, but it's out of bounds. So he throws it away, looking for Brizolara. Double coverage there. Dieter and Calabrese on the defensive coverage for Case. And neither one of them bid on the, the double move from Brizolara. He gave a kind of a stop and a go look about 15 yards into his route. And Dieter underneath and Calabrese over the top. Neither one of them bid on the move. And we're there fully covering Brizolara as the ball sailed probably, what, 15, 15 yards out of bounds? Landed on the track. Second down and 10, 21 seconds left in the second quarter. UAA opener between Chicago and Case. Cortina will throw it out. It's caught by a dark with 30, 35 near the 39-yard line and gets out of bounds at the 39-yard line and stops the clock with 15 seconds left, but still deep in their own territory at the 39-yard line. Case has notched two field goals today from Dan Vassell, one of 17 seniors. <coughs> Maroons coming out to, on a third down and four. 15.2 seconds left. Two receivers split out to the right, one on the left. That is Brizolara over on the far side this time. Cortina looking for him, middle of the field. Matt Davis knocks it down, and it's incomplete. And then Kevin Nossum gives a little love tap to D. Brizolara after that ball was tipped by Matt Davis. Well, Case was playing a three deep, and they were man-to-man -man underneath. And Davis was underneath with the man coverage, and he knew that if he just runs Brizolara deeper into the into the secondary, there was major help over the top as Case played that kind of bubble three deep zone to protect against the big play. So it was really a squeeze play between the Case defense. Nine seconds left in the second quarter, and it's fourth and four from the Chicago 39. They will go for it. Cortina will roll out, throw it over the middle for Adarqua, makes the catch, has first down yardage to the 50 to the 45. And still on his feet, he did not get out of bounds. The clock goes to zero, and that is it for the first half. There's a couple of shoves at the end of that play. Kevin Nossum now they got, got to Darkwood down. And uh, I've not yet seen the signal, and there it is. That's the end of the first half. 